Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral and Bethlehem Chapel on this Thursday, August 1st. My name is Patrick Kieser, and I'm happy to join with you this day for this service of prayer. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. From Psalm 146. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever. Our reading today comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 47th verse. Jesus said, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? His disciples answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. In this long 13th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus offers a series of parables, concluding with the one we've just heard. This parable of the drawing of the net puts before us a topic that we often avoid, namely that of judgment. It is a topic that can be so easily misrepresented and is used by some who claim the name of Christian in ways that manipulate and induce guilt. It is an undeniable and sad truth that to many outside of our tradition, Christianity is often thought of and considered to be about harsh judgment. That is, of course, an understanding that is both unfortunate and inaccurate, while we cannot accept this understanding of the faith, neither can we deny the reality of a judgment to come. Each Sunday, we recite in the creed that Jesus will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. It is an affirmation that there will come a time when we are held accountable for our actions and decisions we cannot deceive ourselves into thinking that we can live without consequences, that there is no accountability. There will come, come a time for judgment, but we are assured that the judge is just and merciful, compassionate, and full of steadfast love. This parable of the dragnet also reminds us that it is not our task to do the judging. That comes at the end of the age. We are not the judge, and for that we can give thanks. We should therefore guard ourselves against any attitude that supposes that we are indeed that judge. An earlier parable from this same chapter, Matthew 13, that of the wheat and the tares, affirms that in this life the weeds grow alongside the good seed, and it is not our task to attempt to separate them. Instead, we affirm that there will be a time when we are all held accountable by a merciful Savior, and as we await that time, we live as that same Savior taught us 
abiding by his commandments to love God, to love our neighbor and all of creation, just as we ourselves are loved. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to teach us to love others as he has loved us. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice in the world. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are sick, suffering, and in any sort of need. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to grant peace and eternal rest to all those who have died and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit to all those who mourn. Lord, have mercy. Now in the silence to follow, I invite your own prayers. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen.